So we're looking at some mild steel projects here that we could consider next. Uh, we have toasting fork, traditional shovel, coat hook. Uh, we're thinking that what we might go with here is a shovel that would do for somebody with a stove for taking the ice out at the bottom. So we're thinking of sheet metal, mild steel sheet metal for this part here with a, a handle on it with a, a hook put on to the end of it to hang it up if need be. So we just took a sheet of paper, folded it down the middle and got a centre line and then we did some gradients and stuff here. Now this can be the basis for your shovel. So if you wanted a square shovel or a flared out shovel you've got lots of options here. What we do need though is a good deep edge on it here and that gives us loads of room for riveting a handle on. So for that reason we're picking out uh, 30 by 30 for the top here. Now with the grid drawn out like this it's quite easy then just to decide which one of these styles you'd like to go for. So by doing this we've flared the shovel out a wee bit so it's wide going narrow and then this is the side of the shovel which we would radius at the point to take any sharp edges off. Uh, we've allowed for a notch to be cut out here with our notching machine and these are all waste. So here's a final idea that we have derived from this sheet here. And if you take photocopies of this, in case you make a mistake, you can have another go at it quite quickly. So we're going to bring this up. We've used a ruler just to fold this along. And we could study the size of the shovel as our particular needs. Uh, finally, we'll just bend this one up here. that when we fold our, fold, fold our shovel up at the back in the folding machine then we can bend these around here and rivet them on. So we've got an idea of what our shovel is going to be like. And if that doesn't suit us for size, back to the paperwork, make a bigger one. So with a wee bit of PVA glue on the back, we're just going to put it onto a piece of sheet metal here. Now we didn't have one just cut to the right size obviously, so but I had this strip here so I'm putting it down like so. Use an existing edge if you have it to see if you're cutting that one. So we're putting it on like that, leaving enough room here for the gabbro to get a grip. Just ease that out. So here we are ready to cut and down we come with the notcher. All the way through. This reduces it down to a manageable size and then we just go again and basic shape of it so far. We need to trim this bit off here and we're going to take these two slots out to allow for folding. So we'll just position those up into the notcher here now. Bring it down just to check that we don't want to go too far with it and we're sort of happy with that position there now. Just before we take this notch out I've moved the metal back and forward so I'm happy now that the notch will stop at the bottom of the track and there it goes. These flaps have a roll here because they stop the material from coming back up. See that? But really when you think about it it's just forced one piece of metal through another. So again we just position this carefully and again it's the distance in and out I'm looking for here. Get it correct and down and cut. So we've trimmed this little bit off with a notcher. I'm just going to take this other bit of excess off here. I'll save us having to file that off later on. So I just look across and I'm happy enough there with everything. Down with the cutter and cut. And here we have our shovel ready for folding. We have our box pan folder and straightforward folding machine. 
we can set our piece of metal in here. Bring the handle down. Onto the line. Now I need to press down in one hand and pull with the other hand. Okay, and then always check that you've got it to a right angle and you can put a little square onto that if you wish. To check you've got your angle right. I'll just give it another wee touch here. It's okay. Now that leaves that we need to bring up these sides here. Now we're going to get a wee bit of a collision go on between this hitting this but we simply just bring that back a fraction and that leaves us ready for the next bend. And for this we're going to come in past the side of the folder bars and this gives it room and up we go again we bring it over to slightly past the 90, we can't really get past it. Here you can see our little shovel starting to take shape. I've had to move to the other side of the folder to do this one. And again, up it comes. That's it. You can see our little shovels taking shape well. Okay, so we'll just use this little stick here to... So here we have our shovel taking shape and what we're going to do next is just to give it a wee quick clean up. I've been wire brushing it here. It's really just getting a place to, to work on. These sticks can be very handy just to give you a wee bit of support. So So it's starting to look not too bad here. Now here what we're going to do is to put one rivet in here. And we'll talk more about the rivets later on. But the hole that we need is a 1 8 hole. Or 3 millimeter approximately. But uh, if you can get an 8th bit I think that suits the rivets better. Okay so we're going to put... Um, couple of scribe lines here to find the centre, some scribing here and another one across here. Now, some people would just use a fine marker for this but traditionally that would have been scribed. So what we're going to do now is just making sure it's got good metal support in underneath. You can't really use a piece of wood for this here, you need, you need metal and um, good sound foundation in underneath it or everything distorts. Just give it one decent clout there with the two in this case. That should be enough. And that's it centre punched ready for the drilling. Now the role of the centre punch is to stop the drill from skidding about on the top. So here we are we're about to drill two holes here for our rivets. And we've just used this piece of wood here to give us the sort of support that we need in the vise. So we just clamp it up and make it as level as possible. And give that a wee nip. So we're holding the, the shovel and the support piece of wood here. And just position everything. And that's it, ready to go. tip here is after we've drilled through and underneath you see this burr and that burr is going to be in the way for our rivet later on so just with an ordinary long drill bit 
it's sometimes a handy way just to get in there. And we we'll just put a bit of a, a chamfer in that, or a wee bit of a countersink, just to get the burr off. Steel's always a wee bit more stubborn than the other materials. And that's it now, so I can feel that it's flush there. Just repeat that on the other side. Okay, so we've got our hole ready here on this side uh, for a rivet. And we've just got a, a 1 8 mile steel rivet. It's a sort of a soft rivet. Um, in other words, we can hammer it. It's fairly malleable. We can knock it into various shapes quite easily. And if we just insert this through here. Now, we have a whole lot of options available to us. We can have the round head on the inside, have the round head on the outside and rivet it down here. Now there are some implications if we decide to go this route. But first of all we need to cut this to length which we can do then put back in and then just hammer down with a hammer. But it's very hard to get at to get a nice finish on it. Let's say if you wanted to file it or do anything like that, you can't get in there. So in this Okay. So in this case here I'm going to choose to put rivet through from this side here and rivet through to here. Now clearly this rivet is much too long and there are various traditional rules about how much you cut off and much, how much you leave on. Um, in this case here I'm just going to cut off and leave about the thickness of the rivet. So in the case of an eighth rivet I'm going to leave about an eighth or a wee bit more of rivet sticking out for us to bring down. I just like to grab it in the vise like that. Take our saw. Now I'm pulling this back so I can see exactly the amount that I'm going to leave on. So they're quite soft and they cut quite easily, so we've got this amount left on. Now the next thing we want to do is to prepare our vise. And in this case here, it's really using a thing called a rivet set. We can see it's a, a 1 8 rivet set. There's a couple of things this does. We can support the round-headed rivet in underneath using this dome, and that's what we're going to do now. now it can be a little bit tricky sometimes just getting the right position in the vise, so we use the edge of the vise quite a bit for this type of work. And you do need a good quality engineer's vise to do this type of work. So, just place this on, down into the dome, and we take another rivet set. So we've got it placed onto the dome of the rivet on the inside and then we're just going to use the rivet set again but this time the hole in it and we place that hole over that and we tap the hole that down. Get that, that good dead sound means you've got a good tight fit in here. All right. Now again, uh, what, we're, what we're going to do here is just start knocking this rivet down and to do that we use a ball pin hammer. And I'm not even taking it off the, the rivet set in underneath anymore. We've got it in position. So off we go. So I'm just moving around the rivet, mushrooming around as I go. Now there are two things taking place. I'm, I'm, I'm reducing the length of it, but I'm also making the rivet thicker. It's referred to as upsetting. stage we bring the other dome up and we can start bringing it into shape just checking for the tightness there and you can see the dome is forming here okay it's just taking up the shape of this so we just set that back inside again Good quality riveted joint on that. That'll not come off. <laughs> 